At the edge of the Namib Desert in Namib Province is Primero de Mayo Primary School. Let's meet one of its English teachers. My name is Andre Cajalipeyo. Yes, uh, I live alone in Fort Santa Rita Quarta. Yes, nearest, yes, in Namibi, nearest of uh, Primero de Mayo School. Yeah, it's too, it's too near from here. Yes, and uh, uh, yeah, I'm only teacher, English teacher from the Primero de Mayo School. Yeah, I began, I began on 2011. Yeah, so last year. Okay, so you're a new teacher. Yes, I'm a new teacher. You've been teaching one year. Yes, yes, one year only. Yes. Let's watch part of a lesson where teacher Andre talks about clothes to a beginner seventh grade class. While watching, take note of the six different ways he uses Portuguese. Make a list of the six situations. Also, think about whether you agree with his uses or not. How are you today? Yes, I'm fine. Hmm. Estão bem dispostos? Hmm. Comer alguma coisa antes de vir para aqui? Hmm. Por que não? What is the date is it today? Wednesday, good. The same number? What we talked about in the last lesson? What? Claudius. Yes. Ah, okay, good. Claudius. We talked about Claudius. Yes. Stand up, please. Okay. Name two kind of clothes that you know. Two. No, Claude. You told me Claude, no color. Claude. Jeans. Jeans. See jeans. Uh huh. Jacket. Jacket. Good. Thank you. Shirt. Shirt. Good. Number four. Ooh. Okay, trousers. T-shirt. Good. Thank you. Paul, my vossos colegas já sentaram. Bonito. Obrigado. Obrigado. Ok. Uh, havia um senhor que estava assim perante a estrada e viu alguém a passar assim de moto, de bicicleta, né? Normalmente quando alguém passa de bicicleta, a, a camisola. Cria um balão, não é? Sim. Ele disse, ah, essa camisola é boa, é bonita, hein? Eu vou numa loja e vou procurar essa camisola. E ele foi lá numa loja e diz assim, oh, oh senhor, é, bom dia, eu preciso aí uma camisola com ar. <risos> com ar? Sim, eu quero uma camisola com, com ar. Não, 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 não temos essa camisola. O oh, senhor, é assim, uma camisola assim que eu vi alguém lá, estava andando, e depois aquilo ficou assim, então aquilo eu gostei muito, eu quero assim, com ar. Existe essa camisola? Não. <risos> Tudo bem, então, na nossa retrospectiva, vamos falar de que hoje? Ah, roupa? Ok, roupa, muito bem, roupa, de novo, roupa, ok? Já sabem que, é, portanto, roupa, em inglês é clothes. Good. E para vocês, eu tenho uma pequena surpresa. Não, mas é, é grife original, hein? <risos> <risos> ok? É o original. Aqui não tem nada fake, aqui pirata, não tem. O professor comprou meu memory. Isso. Mas depois da aula não é levar, hein? <risos> Eu acho presencial. Ok. Good. Good. Yes. Shit. Essa aqui veio mesmo lá da, da máquina de lavar, então. 
Diretamente para aqui. <risos> ok? Sim, Sim senhora. Veste. Suete. Sim, senhora. Ah? Como é que vocês chamam isso? Chuna. Chuta, chuna, né? Sim, senhora. E, portanto, nós temos vocabulário. Tá? Vamos ver o voca vocabulário de Claude. Ok? Vocabulary of Claude. Ok, vocabulário. Então, esse é o nosso vocabulário. Please, repeat after me. Vocabulary. Vocabulary. Não vocar, porque o A é que? É. Neste contexto fica vocabulary. Vocabulary. Good. Jacket. Jacket. Trousers. Trousers. Jeans. Jeans. No G. Jeans. Jeans. Good. T-shirt. T-shirt. What is this? Scarf. Scarf. Someone having scarf here? No one? No. Okay. Scarf. See? Is it? Scarf. Have short. Don't laugh. Is it? Short. How do you call here in Angola? Eh? <laughs> tuna baby, eh? Yeah. Is it? <laughs> but this tuna baby is not mine. <laughs> okay. okay. Now we have. Jeans, t-shirts. Good. Thank you. Okay. Fala mais para vocês. Está uma caminha bem. Assim. Está bonito. Está bonito. Eu estou a gostar. Por acaso estou a gostar. Ok, agora vamos é, consoante as perguntas. Normalmente nós vamos trabalhar com o verbo to like, mas com o auxiliar do, ok? Há verbos que se auxiliam dos outros, não é? Como por exemplo em português é dizer eu tenho sido, tem dois verbos, não tem? Ter e ser, não é isso? Yes. Tenho sido. Então, tem um verbo que está a auxiliar o outro, não é isso? Yes. Neste caso é qual? O ter, não é isso? Yes. Tenho sido, tenho ido, tenho feito. Então, esse é o auxílio do outro verbo, ok? Em inglês também, vamos trabalhar com o verbo a auxiliar, que é o verbo do. Do, do, do. Ok? Neste caso, a pergunta vem. Question. Simple. Question one. Do you... Normalmente, ao perguntar, não é? Em inglês. Ao perguntar alguma coisa em alguém, primeiro vem o verbo, depois é que vem o pronome pe Pessoa. Neste caso, o verbo veio pri primeiro. Do. Está a entender? Yes. Neste caso fica do. Depois o pronome a pessoa veio a seguir. Depois é que pergunta o que gosto, o que não gosto. Do you like? Ok. Do you like? Vamos fazer um stretch aqui. Do you like jacket? Neste caso vamos trabalhar também com as cores da roupa, ok? Yes. Ok. What is the color of this jacket? Black. Black jacket. Yes. Do you like black? Black jacket. Yes. Do you like black jacket? Mm -hmm. Scarf. Black and white. Black and white. Huh? Black and white. Good. Black. And white. Resposta E. Answer. Yes. 
I do. Amen. Eh? Yes, I do. Or Oh, no, I don't. Okay? Yes. Pay attention. Do you like a black jacket? Yes, I do. Or, no, I don't. Do you like a black and white scarf? No, I don't. Yes, I do. Can you understand me? Yes. Can you understand me? Yes. Okay, good. How did you do? Could you identify the different ways teacher Andre used Portuguese? Now it's time to spend a while with our mentor, Professor Delcio. He will talk about the ways teacher Andre used Portuguese and give his suggestions on how to use more English in a class of this level. First of all, we would like to congratulate Teacher Andre for allowing us to enter his classroom. So it's not always easy to be observed, filmed, or even critiqued. Teacher Andre was very theatrical and entertaining, which reminds us of a method called Sagistopedia. In this method, the teacher leads students to use the target language in a beautiful, easy, and sometimes dramatic ways. Yes, by using um, uh, real objects, by using some um, gestures and other objects and sometimes even music, yes? It's important that the teachers bear in mind that it's possible to expose students to the target language using the target language, in this case English. And even at lower levels like grade 7, it's possible to do, to do that. Let us look at the six ways teacher Andre used Portuguese and followed by my suggestions on how to do it in English. Number one, for greetings and small talk. Teacher Andre greets his class, asks them if they're in a good mood and if they've eaten anything before class. The use of L1 in a second or foreign language classroom is still very controversial. Some experts defend that it can be used, whereas others defend that it cannot be used. For me, uh, L1 can be used in a few situations. But for this level, greetings, for example, can only be done in English. It's more than appropriate to do that in English, as long as the teacher uses teaching tools like gestures. Here is an example of how I did that in a class. Good morning, class. Good morning, teacher. How are you? Fine or not fine? Fine. Who is fine? Who is fine? Who is fine? Okay, he's fine. Who is fine? Who is not fine? Who is not fine? Who is not well? Who is not fine? Who is not fine? Who is fine? Good. Did you have breakfast? Breakfast. Who had breakfast? Who had breakfast? So you are not hungry. Are you hungry? Oh, are you hungry? Yes or no? No. No? No. What did you have for breakfast? Kisangwa. What else? Hmm? Good. More? Good. Mm-hmm. Good. Are you ready for the lesson? Yes. yes. Are you ready? Yes. Okay, good. Sit down. Number two, for positive feedback and praise. Teacher Andre asked the class to clap for correct answers individual students gave while reviewing clothing vocabulary. Okay. Uh. Teacher Andre used Portuguese to praise students. But I think that this can be done totally in English. It's not difficult for students to notice that they did a good job. And for Portuguese speakers, which is our case, this can be done by using cognates, which are words which have both in both languages the same meaning and they even sound the same. Words like bravo, excellent, 
super brilliant can be used by the teacher in the classroom I myself tend to overuse good I should try other words but it takes time and practice but you can also try other ways of praising students actions are very useful actions like thumbs up giving a high five or even clapping can also be used to praise students number three for a warm-up teacher andre tells an entertaining story about a shirt with air to get students ready to speak about clothes andre himself admitted that his students cannot process everything he says in english for a warm-up grade seven using a story may be too much instead the teacher could start with the basic words that everyone understands and in this way getting their mind working and it would be also very helpful to set the topic of the day in this case clothing let us see what it might look like in the classroom can you tell me do you use jeans to go to the church hallelujah to go to the church do you use jeans yes or no no yes to go to the church do you use trousers yes to go to a party to go to a party you know a party yes, yes. do you use shoes Yes. 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 Yes or no? Yes. Or use sandals. You know sandals? No. Use, come, come here. Hello. What's your name? My name is Dorival. Dorival, can you come here? Can I see your sandals? Like that? Oh, be like that. Strong man. These are sandals. Yes. To go to a party. You know a party? Yes? A party. Birthday party. Happy birthday to you. Yes? Yes. Do, do, do you use a sandals, a pair of sandals, or a pair of shoes? A pair of shoes. Yes? Yes. To go to a picnic, do you use sandals or shoes? Sandals. Yes? Yes. To go to the to Praia Zoo, yes, to the beach, do you use sandals or shoes? Sandals. Yes? yes? Good. Thank you, Dorivaldo. Yes. Thank you very much. Number four, while setting up an exercise. While teacher Andre puts clothes on hangers for the review, okay. he talks to the class about the clothes he has in an informal way. Setting up an exercise is the time when the teacher is putting out the material for the lesson. This is usually the time when students sit in silence and the teacher doesn't speak to them. Instead, you can use this time yes, to flood students with some language, but in a non-threatening way. They just listen to you and watch. Sometimes you'll be amazed at what students can remember when you don't force them to listen. They do. Let us see how I did that in a class. I've got some clothes here. I have got a, a sweet shirt, yes. It's so very nice. I bought it in Washington. Yes. I've got here a shoe. Yes. yes. This shoe was offered to, my, to me by my father. Yes. Nice. C classic. Yes. Classic. Yes. A little bit classic. I've got my sister's swimming suit. Yes. Small. She's, yes, she's so young. She's She's three, yes? She's three years old, yes? This is her swimming suit. Nice. Yes, it's nice. Mm -hmm. Let me take a good care of it. Okay, here we have a t-shirt, yes? Yes. It's a gray t-shirt, yes? Can you see? Very nice, very nice. Vision streetwear, nice. Yes? Yes. I have a tie. You see this tie, yes? Wow, nice tie. Yes? Yes. Wow, does it doesn't fit with this shirt, yes? Yes. Yeah, but it's nice, yes? Very nice, right? Yes. <laughs> Number five, for grammatical explanation. Teacher Andre compares Portuguese to English in the use of auxiliary verbs. Tem dois verbos, não tem? Grammatical explanation is an interesting one for this level. Andre didn't spend a lot of time doing that. I think he was trying to show students how the two words structure for auxiliary verb function both in English and Portuguese, which is almost in the same way. 
I have always seen it as a rule that we only resort to Portuguese or to L1 when the structure is complex or when we are dealing with the difficult concepts like um, teaching uh, conditionals, like the difference between going to and will. But for simple grammar, we can create a context in which we insert the new structure for students to understand followed by repetition and practice. Even with complex structures, we can create a context. But for Andres lessons, a grammatical explanation in Portuguese, I guess it was not necessary. Number six, to check understanding. Teacher Andre asked the class if they understand at different points during the lesson. Can you understand me? Yes. Okay, good. Andre asked a lot of what he considered comprehension questions. Okay, do you understand? Do you understand me? We all know that our students are used to saying yes, even if they do not understand what is being talked about. During Andre's lesson, at the end, we could see that when he asked with a soft voice, there was no response. But when he asked students again with a strong voice, magically everybody said yes. These questions are not good means to check understanding. Instead, the teacher can use concept questions, which are yes or no questions used to check if students understood or not, and they are much more efficient. Let us see how this is done in class. I want to teach students the word weekend. Watch how I get them to understand it. What day of the week is it today? Today is no, the day of the week. The day of the week. Good. Good. Yes, tomorrow? Today? Good. Tomorrow? Today is? Tomorrow? Wait, 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 calm down. Good. Today is? Today is? Today? Today? Good. Today is? Good. Thank you. Sit down. Tomorrow, a volunteer to tell me about tomorrow. Tomorrow? Yes? Tomorrow? Good. The day after tomorrow? Tuesday. Yes, stand up, stand up. Wait, wait. Good, good, good. Yes? So today is Friday, tomorrow is Saturday, and the day after tomorrow is Sunday. Okay, so Saturday and Sunday are week. And yes? yes, we call that week and is it okay? Yes. Monday is Monday weekend? No. Monday weekend, yes or no? No. 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 Okay. Wednesday weekend? Yes or no? No. no. Yes? No. Do you do you go to the church at the weekend? No. no. At the weekend? Yes. Yes or no? Yes. No. To the church at the weekend? Yes. yes. Do you go? Do you go to church at the weekends? Yes. Do you come to school at the weekends? No. Okay. Okay. You know what weekend is. Now I'll tell you what I do at the weekends. Yes? So to conclude what we've seen in this module, with such limited time for English class each week, teachers in Angola should consider flooding as much English into the classroom as possible even if it means sometimes students don't understand. Think about the stages of a lesson. When is it necessary for students to understand every word? When is it okay if they just get the general idea? The next time you step into the classroom, try to see how many different ways you can use English instead of depending on the Portuguese you're used to. Good luck and you can do it.